Are you looking for a fun educational gift experience for a gamer? Have you wanted to build your own PC, but have found it too intimidating? We have the perfect solution in the Intel Core i5 gaming DIY kit to build a high performance gaming desktop. And we'll walk you through a super simple step-by-step -step process to assemble it. All right, enough talk, let's get to the build. We're first going to check to make sure that we have all the required components. Starting with the processor, we have an Intel Core i5-9400F, 16GB of G-Skill Ripjaws V-Series RAM, a 512GB Intel M.2 SSD, an EVGA GeForce GTX 1660 XC Black gaming GPU, a 520 watt power supply, a Gigabyte B360 Aorus Gaming 3 Wi-Fi motherboard, and a Fantex Eclipse case. For tools, we need a number two Phillips screwdriver, or a screwdriver roughly this size, a number one Phillips screwdriver, and wire cutters. Scissors would work as well. We're going to move all of the other components out of the way for now and focus on unboxing the case and power supply. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the four bolts that are holding onto the front tempered glass. Then place the glass down on a flat surface. Then we're going to remove the two bolts holding on the case's back panel. Next, we're going to find the correct power supply cables for our system in the black bag that came with our power supply. We're going to need to plug three different cables into our power supply. The wide connector with 24 pins is going to plug into the MB ports on the power supply. We need to plug in one connector with PCIe on the end of it and one connector with CPU on the end of it. We're now going to install the power supply into the case. We're going to place the power supply with the fan facing downward. We're then going to use the four screws that came with the power supply to attach the power supply to the case. After we've done this, we're going to move our power supply in case so that we can get our motherboard ready. We're going to unbox our motherboard first and remove the SATA power connector, IO shield, two small screws used to install our wireless and SSD modules, and the motherboard itself. We're going to begin by installing the processor. To open the socket, press down and then outward on the socket lever, then pull up on the lever. You need to identify the CPU keying. There's a yellow triangle on the corner of the processor. This is going to be facing the lower left-hand corner of the motherboard. Gently place the processor in the middle of the socket according to the keying, and then lightly press down on the processor and wiggle your finger to ensure the processor is fully in the socket. Then move the socket mechanism down, move the lever up all the way back down, and then inward to lock it in place. Next, we're going to install our DRAM modules. We need to open the locking mechanisms for the second and the fourth slot from the CPU. Next, we can remove our DRAM modules from their plastic clamshell. We orient the DRAM module so that the stickers are facing the processor. As we press the module into the slot, you will hear a firm click from the top and the bottom of the socket when it's fully inserted. Repeat this process for the second module. Now we can install our Intel PCIe SSD module. We'll remove the clamshell from the Optane box and then remove the module from that clamshell. Now insert the module into the slot labeled M.2. Next, we'll use one of the screws that came with the motherboard to install the module with a number one Phillips screwdriver. The small wireless module will be installed the same way.
Next, we'll install our CPU cooler. Orient the cooler so that the fan connector faces the top of the board. Then line up the four retention mechanisms on the bottom of the cooler to the four holes in the motherboard. Then firmly press down on each of the corners to lock it into place. Tighten each corner by twisting it as shown by the arrow on each retention mechanism. and then plug the cooler into the port on the motherboard. Now we're going to start installing the motherboard into the case. We'll first install the motherboard I.O. panel. Orient the I.O. panel so that you can read the labels. This side faces the back of the case. Press the I.O. panel from the inside of the case outward. Then we can gently lay the motherboard down with the I.O. near the I.O. shield like this. And then press the motherboard so that it's pressing against the I.O. shield. Take the finely threaded screws that came out of the white box in the case and screw them into the five locations as shown. After the motherboard is installed, lift the case so that you can access the back. Route the HD audio connector, the front panel button connector, and the USB 3 connector through the bottom of the case as shown. The HD audio connector plugs into the port labeled F underscore audio in the bottom left hand corner of the motherboard. Now we're going to plug in the front panel cables into the front panel port in the bottom right corner of the motherboard. We can now plug in the USB 3 cable to the USB 3 port. Pay attention to the notch in the USB 3 cable and port. Now we're going to connect the motherboard with the power supply. First, run the large 24-pin power connector through the front side of the case. Then take the connector labeled CPU and run it to the top of the case and then to the front. Take the CPU power connector and install it into the motherboard in the top left corner. Take the large 24-pin and install it into the motherboard with the latch on the right. You should hear or feel a click when it's fully inserted. We're now going to plug in the case fan. There's a cable with three pins that will plug into the top three pins on the port labeled SYS underscore fan 2. Ensure that the tabs on the cables are pointing to the left. We can then bundle all the slack on the cable together, tighten it with the zip tie, and then clip the excess off the zip tie with our wire cutters. We can then grab the PCIe power connector and run it to the front of the case. Next, we need to remove the PCIe slot covers so that we can install our graphics card. We can now install the GPU. Remove the rubber from the contacts on the bottom of the GPU and all other plastic. Line the GPU up with the topmost slot on the motherboard, ensure the gold contacts are aligned with the slot, and then press it into the slot until you hear or feel a click. Now install all three screws back into the PCIe slots to attach the GPU to the case. Now, plug in the PCIe power cable into the GPU as shown. 
We can then install the case back panel. You can lightly pull on the cables to tuck as much of the cable slack as possible into the backside of the case. Then press and slide the back panel into place and screw it in. We can then install the tempered glass with the four screws that we took out of it. Congratulations! With that, your physical build is complete. This DIY kit also includes a copy of Microsoft Windows, along with free games and software. Check your email from Newegg for your game downloads and visit the link on the screen and in the description below this video for help installing Windows.